The following show contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to the Poor Charlie Podcast, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and finally, both of my co-hosts are here. We have Namio, we have Julia. Hi. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, it is, it is great. Finally, both of you are here. This is going to be awesome. And this week was amazing to be as well. Oh, my God. Just, holy shit. It, it had to be it had to be sweeps this week. I mean, so much happened. Oh, yeah. And it's a good time for that week to happen because this is episode number 50. Woo! So we... We're as many episodes old as the show is years old. <laughs> Almost. Woo! We're off by a year. That, that'll be next time. Because okay. the show is 51. <laughs> but we're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> uh, but before, before we get into our thoughts... On the, on the entire week and everything. Um, first of all, how has you how has y'all's week been? Good. <laughs> Busy. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh yeah. It, it it has been a week. Uh, we had elections, but you know that's for another show. We yeah. all know how that went. We all <laughs> and we all want to punch things. Well, Thank some you. of us do. But um. But another thing, I I I am prompt of. I impromptuly, if that's even a word, started it this week. Uh, if you go over to the Port Charlie podcast Tumblr, uh, I had asked a question, you know, how people thought of this particular week, because, you know, I want to get a little bit more audience interaction in here. It, it, it's, it would be a good thing, and I know there are more fans of General Hospital over there on Tumblr that do follow me and, and actually follow the show, so, you know, why not? Bring them all in. Let, let's, let's, let's see what they have to say. Um, and like I said, this particular week is just, well, what did you think of the week? You know, certain things, what have you. And uh, I've, I've actually got two responses that I'm going to read here. Uh, the first one is from Hermione Clone, uh, who says, The wedding was underwhelming. We essentially knew what was about what was going to go down, and it was the explosion we all knew was coming. There was nothing really creative about it, no twist no one saw coming, unless that will be Franco deciding not to go through with killing everyone or whatever his plans are. Michael's reaction to the whole thing is understandable and heartbreaking, but I am really hoping he doesn't shoot. So many so many better ways for revenge. Nina is just a poorly written character. <laughs> Nina's bug nuts, yes. Interesting. Yes. Um, I, I guess, you know, I hadn't really thought about it like that, but I guess I, I agree about the wedding to a point. I, I was a little surprised that... Franco uh, was bringing Heather in to kill Carly. Just yeah. to let her shoot her. And so then, but, but I bought it because Franco is kind of psychotic. And then when he turned around and pulled the gun on Heather, mm -hmm. I thought it was very interesting as well. Um, and then I'm, I'm still a little unsure why he just then walked away and left them locked up in there so yeah. they could presumably you know, escape this. Yeah, I, I don't understand. I mean, maybe, maybe, I, 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 I can't even. I mean, he walked away and then he went and got a drink. Right. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I have mixed feelings <laughs> about, uh, like, all of the uh, threatened deaths because the, cause there were a lot of them this week. Um, and I'm like, you know... On the one hand, it does make things tense, but on the other hand, it's not like they're gonna kill off Sonny. No. Come on. They're not gonna kill him. They're not gonna, you know... They're probably not gonna kill off Sean. They're probably not gonna kill off Heather. They're definitely not gonna kill off Carly. Yeah. And so, I'm like, you know... On the one hand, it is exciting, but on the other hand, it's a little bit difficult for me to get intensely emotionally invested mm -hmm. because um because I don't believe it. I don't believe these characters are actually in mortal danger. That's right. because... yeah, the difficult thing with with subs because you know we usually get a heads up if someone's contract is up, if someone's exactly the show. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it, it is hard to that the stakes aren't as high as they're acting like they are. 
Yeah. And I, I think, I was thinking about this recently, actually, because what soaps do a lot, I think, is have villains who are very either stupid or they don't plan well. And, mm-hmm. and it's just not that interesting to watch, like, you know, the good guys or whatever defeat them because yeah. it's just so easy. So if the villains were a little smarter and didn't say leave, you know, four three, you know, creative badass kind of people locked in a room together, um, and we say what you will about Heather, she's excellent at escaping from locked facilities. Yes. yes. You know, and, and he just walked away and left them, you know, not tied up or anything. You so, know, if, <laughs> if I could give this past week's uh, as a whole a title, it would probably be Shut the fuck up and shoot already. Yes. God damn. Because there were so many of those moments. It's like, no, really. If you're going to do it, shut the fuck up and shoot. Yeah, but you got to have monologues for dramatic effect. I know. And, and I know. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, there, uh, to continue on with this, uh, there's also another one from uh, Sherry Baby 8 Both, both. by the way, Sherry Baby 8 and Hermione Clone, both on Tumblr. Um if I didn't clarify before. I probably did, but in just in case. Uh, Sherry Baby 8 says, uh, This week's GH was amazing. I couldn't keep my head on straight with everything being revealed left and right. I feel like Franco... I was like Franco, except I was eating real popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> it's about damn time Sonny gets seen for the low life he is. I was a Sonny fan until he just kept getting away with every single thing he does. It's It got really tiring after a point. He's getting what he deserves, along with Carly's hypocritical ass. And kudos to Chad Duell this week. This is his Emmy reel. Nina is just batshit crazy. Yeah. Yeah, and and I, I agree with with uh, with her with with, with her kudos to Chad Duell because oh my god, <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> he he is doing. If he does not win an Emmy for for this, I am I am going to call shenanigans. And it's about time, too. You know, Michael has had has been in the dark for so long as everyone around him has found out all these secrets and has been conspiring to keep it all from him. So, you know, which is great build-up for what's going down now, but for so long, Michael has had, like, shit all to do. So it's yeah. really nice to see him get to shine a little, finally. Oh, yeah. And and this even goes back further, because he, you know, he went on about... You know the history of what Sar- Carly and Sonny had done over the years. You know they they essentially they took Michael away from AJ. And I read up a little bit on it, reminded myself of it. One of one of the things that Carly did was you know in order to get Michael away from AJ is to prove that he was you know off the back because at the time he realized okay got a baby want to help take care of the baby you know get sober. So what Carly does is drug him, pour alcohol on him, and throw his ass in, a, in an alleyway. Make him think he fell off the wagon. And, wow. And it worked because that's where AJ's self-esteem was. Because it's like, oh, shit, I did. Uh, I can't control myself. Wait, I was drugged? Oh, fuck. <laughs> you know? And and it doesn't help that when it when when it came time for AJ to sign away his rights, he, he was very, very coerced into doing it by Sonny. By that, I mean Sonny hung him on a meat hook and beat the shit out of him until he did it. Or at least some, had somebody beat the shit out of him till he did it. So that, that's one of the thing, one of the reasons why, when it comes to Michael and Sonny, is like Sonny, you you intimidated a man on behest of a woman who didn't like him for whatever reason to have the fir- the, the the son you have in Michael. And and I under, and when it comes to like protecting Michael from everything. You know, he, they don't want him to get hurt. They don't want this and that to happen. And it's kind of understandable. But I will hold that Michael deserves to know the truth. And now he does. He should have known it a long time ago, at least from somebody. And it plays into another thing, too. Because, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty in all of this. If just one of these characters, Sonny, Carly, uh, eventually Morgan... Eight. Well, Ava could have. He probably would not have believed her. Yeah. You know, but if just any one of these characters had been honest and up front with him, Franco would have less ammunition. And did you notice, along those lines, 
the first one of the first things that Dante did when he started to suspect Sonny was tell Michael. Yes. And he and he actually said, you know, I figured it's better you hear this from, you know, your brother than from someone, you know, from some stranger. Mm-hmm. And it's like, ah. <laughs> yes, you know what? You know, why couldn't Dante have have known about this from before instead of just suspecting now? Although it's more than just suspecting now cuz oh, son, the, the 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 little the little confession that that uh Franco got. You know, it, it's in the hands of the police. He gave it to Daddy. <laughs> oh. Um. No matter what Curly and, and Sonny did in the past, and, and I, I agree karma-wise, you know, they are, I don't want to say getting what they deserve, but, you know, it's coming back to bite them in the ass, yes. Mm-hmm. But purely looking at Franco and Carly's relationship, yeah. uh, the punishment does not fit the crime. No, no, I was thinking that too. <laughs> yeah, that that for for just the simple fact of cheating on him, you know, and and, and it is a betrayal, and betrayal yeah, is big to some people. Big is you know, but he's, he, he's sending her her baby daddy. I don't even know. Uh, starting to send him to jail. She could go to jail for uh, conspiracy or or accomplice after the fact or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Duke is implicated. Um, Morgan and Ava and possibly Kiki could be implicated depending on how this plays out because they knew um, at various points uh, and and destroying Michael's relationship with both of his parents and all this stuff and just the, the fallout of this is so immense. Um, oh, yeah. I I loved Carly calling out Franco for all of that too because she admitted mm-hmm. she admitted that yeah I probably deserve this yeah I should have done that you know yeah I know I was wrong but. What you did involving Michael was so unnecessary, and she's yeah. she's owning what she's done, but she's still calling him out and seeing him for like who he really is, and I just love that. Yeah, and and to be fair, that that is a good point, a point towards Carly, sure. <laughs> uh, and 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 to reiterate, you know, Franco, I I don't agree with his methods, but you know, you know, needing to lash out, needing to do something, I can understand. You know, you're betrayed, you're hurt, you're gonna lash out. I mean, if for no other, if nothing else, he could have just broken it off with her. Yeah. But, but he's also dealing with Sonny and the fact that Sonny knows that Franco knows, so his life is also in danger. And what better way to help neutralize that threat? And and this is I'm, I I might be just throwing a ball way out here in the field or whatever, but what better way to neutralize that threat to his life than getting Sonny put away? True. You know, you know, regardless of what the damage might cause, he he might have understood full well what the damage was, what the what the cost would be in damage, and he was thinking, okay, you know, make make Carly pay, you know, get back at her. Michael knows the truth. Sonny goes to jail. I am safe. You know, and and bear in mind, it's kind of shot in the dark, throwing balls out in the field at this point. And who knows? I could be wrong. It could just be Franco's just fucking bug nuts. You know, I mean, like, it, like seriously, bug nuts. Not, not this, you know, this, this kind of, I want to say, quirky kind of guy that that has been kind of affably, affably crazy. I guess would be the word for it. You know, not really evil, just you know, a little thing. Uh, yeah. I don't, I don't know that he's. I, I think he knows exactly what he's doing and what the effects will be, and I don't really think he cares. Yeah. You know, he he's saying all these things like oh, you know, it's good that Michael knows the truth and he'll thank me someday, but he doesn't care about Michael. He doesn't care if Michael knows the truth or not in terms of how it's going to affect Michael. He only cares about hurting Carly and, and Sonny. Right. So any supposed or, or side effect good motivation is, is bullshit. And it's just him kind of trying to cover his own ass and put him on the moral high ground, which he, I don't, think he ever has had moral high ground. In this in this scenario, definitely. I, I can agree with that. Um, definitely not the higher ground. If anything, if you are gonna compare Cunny and uh, Cunny, wow, that's that's Carly and Franco 
my my brain tried to go Sonny and Carly there. Apparently, I don't. I, I, I'm I'm just out of it. Um, but if we're going to compare Carly and Franco, I think as far as moral high ground goes, neither of them deserve it. I don't think. Yeah, she owned up to what she did. Sure, points to her, but you know, she's also covering up murder from her own son at the same time. Both what I'm what I'm trying to get at is you know I don't think either of them need. You know, should be taking the moral high ground because both of them have done heinous things. You know, in the in this whole ball of situation, you know, whether it's covering up murder or whether it's Franco going way over the top because Carly cheated on him. You know, I, I don't. I, I think at, at very least they're on a moral even ground. I think. Well, I mean, I wasn't. I wasn't trying to say that Carly has the moral high ground. Right. Over Franco, I'm just saying Franco's trying to act like he's on it. Hmm. And which I think is not only incorrect, but, you know, he's trying to paint another sort of false version of himself to people. Um, and I don't think Carly has the moral high ground, but she's being honest about what she's done and accepting that, whereas Franco is still trying to spin things, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah I, I can I can definitely see that. Like, when, when he has everybody in the warehouse and he turns on Heather... I, I noticed, and I even noted it myself. I was like, "Oh, don't turn him into like a straw misogynist or anything, or even a misogynist in general." It's like, you know, you got enough with him. Don't don't turn him into that. Which you know, to be fair, they really didn't, because the reason that he gave for turning on Heather was because she lied to him a lot. Yeah. And you know, that's kind of what this whole thing has been about: is he's just really sick of people lying to him. Well, I, you know, yes and no, because he, what he literally said was, you're just another woman who has lied to me. He made a point of saying that and then started listing all the women who have lied to him. Mm -hmm. So whether it was a deliberate choice on the part of the writers or not, he was definitely, you know, and, and it reminds me of, um, you know, um, the, like, shooting a little while ago. Um, I can't remember where. But, you know, he's he's blaming now sort of all the women in his life for everything that's gone down. Yeah. And, and you know, he, he didn't mention, you know, Scott or Jason or any of the other, you know, like, men that have been important to him. Mm -hmm. or, or even, he didn't really even talk about Sonny. He was talking about all these women who have lied to him, done all these things, and it just really rubbed me the wrong way. And I don't know if that was a deliberate choice by the writers or not, but that's definitely the implication of what they wrote. Well, yeah. I mean... I guess, I guess, I, I don't know, I don't know how to, how to say this, but I guess on some, on some level that makes sense to me because the main, um, the main focus of his rage the, has been on women. Yeah. Well, the main focus of his rage is Carly. Well, yeah. And so, you know, and the big, you know, what, one of his big monologues is he was talking about how, uh, what he's really angry about is the way that she made him believe that uh, that he had changed. And, you know, eh, having, the, you know, if he's never really had that kind of relationship with a woman before, which, eh, I'm like, he kind of had something with Ava back in the day. Like, I, I guess, I guess to my mind, it kind of makes sense that it, his mind would go to, uh, you know, blaming, you know, all of the women who have lied to him. Like, that. Like that. that's a leap that makes sense to me, but it's clearly not some... He's clearly not blaming all women everywhere because he still feels kindly towards Nina. Yeah. Which, which I have to admit, that, that was kind of a nice moment between the two of them when they were, when they it had was. their phone call. It's, it's like, it's so sweet. It kind of... For for lack of a better term, it kind of humanizes both of them a little bit more. They're and it not, takes. <laughs> and they're not just takes... monsters. They're you know they they actual you know despite Franco's you know stoicism when he's pulling his shit off, he does have emotions beyond just angry and and you know wanting to mess with people's brains. You know he he does have genuine feelings underneath all of that, and that, and them showing him that is is it's a it's a good thing I think. It shows yeah. he is not a two-dimensional villain. <laughs> yeah, it was it was really sweet of them to show you know kind of that bonding moment between the two batshit crazy people. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, and, and let's see. Oh yeah, we did bring up 
we did, we have touched on Nina. They've touched on Nina. And Nina, I, I think we left off last week that she'd gotten to Ava. And she's, she got Ava all paralyzed and everything with a shot. And, of course, since Ava's paralyzed, Nina can sit there and monologue all day long. Because, you know, what's, what's Ava going to do? Nobody yeah. knows where Ava is except for Morgan. And, to her knowledge, Morgan isn't going to tell. Silas isn't going to tell. Kiki probably won't tell. So she had no reason to believe otherwise. So she could sit there, monologue. And it, the way that Nina is just describing the baby, it's it's her baby in the thing. I'm, I'm like, Jeevas. That, 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 that takes creep factor. Just like, I think it's, oh, I think it's up to 11 at the very least <laughs> coming from Nina on this one. And ah, Michelle Stafford is doing a, an amazing job, by the way. She, she really is. I, and I'm finally actually starting to sympathize with Nina, mm-hmm. which yeah. for, for, I mean, cause for so long, you know, even when she showed up at the beginning and was kind of, um, you know, she was wheelchair bound and she was playing up that sort of, you know, sickly sweet, um, innocent act with Silas. And I, you know, I don't think any of us bought that for a second. And, and you know, I, we were all very suspicious of her. And then you know, her true color started showing and I was just like, oh my God, she's awful. But like, you know, lately it's really become clear that she's not okay. And that she actually needs, you know, psychiatric help because she's not, cause for a while I thought she was, um, not thinking her plan through, and she just wasn't a very smart villain, mm-hmm. you know? I was like, she's going to take this baby, and then, then what does she think? Well, turns out, she thinks she's going to show the baby to Silas, and he's going to be thrilled, and they're going to get back together and raise this baby. Which, to me, is makes it finally very clear that Madeline has been doing nothing but enabling her, when she really needs to be getting her help. Yeah, not just enabling her, but I... I... You know, hearing Madeline talk out, you know, away from Nina, and I, I don't know how much of it is truth coming from Madeline because of how much Madeline has lied since she's been on the show. But, but I, I sense that there's like some fear of Nina too, in Madeline. Like if she doesn't go with whatever Nina wants, if she doesn't enable Nina, then Nina's going to do something horrible to her. In this case, it's yeah, it, it's withhold the money. But at the same time, you know, she has mentioned that Nina got physically violent. She got physically abusive. And I, I don't think she would want a repeat of that. I kind of don't blame her on that. Yeah, but she could, you know, call Nathan in. She could not let her steal a baby and have yeah. the baby in the vicinity of a potentially violent, unstable woman. I mean, there's Madeline. If she really wanted to or if she really had good intentions, she could have handled it another way. Yeah. That, that, is, that is another way to look at it. I, I look at it as... I, I, could, I, I think where I'm going to end up uh, going with this uh, mentally is it's a mixture of both. She could do something. She doesn't do anything. But she's also kind of afraid and looking out for herself, too. You know, it's, it's kind of like that selfish selfish fear that 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 brings about um um inactivity and just going along with it i think i i i might be inaccurate but that's 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 what i'm kind of getting at here Mm -hmm. well uh you know one thing about madeline is that you know she pretty much only cares about money Mm -hmm. like that's been really really hammered home about her, and so, like, it kind of makes sense to me, um, that, uh, you know, she would basically go along with whatever harebrained scheme Nina's got going, uh, in order to get Nina's money. Yeah. Because I need the money, I want to go back and, 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 and ride into the limousines through New York City and go into, go into the, the hoity-toity you know, upper class Starbucks, not Starbucks, upper class Starbucks. There's a difference, you know, with the, with the pinkies in the air and, and, you know, like the Metro court of New York city, basically. Yeah. <laughs> that... well, have we, not to, um, have we ever heard Madeline say that, you know, say she only wants the money? Cause I feel like we've only heard other people accuse her of only wanting the money. And That's I'm not saying true. she hasn't lied or she, or that she's not selfish, but I'm curious, you know, what more there might there might be to her motivation. 
if if there are other motivations, they have not yet been revealed. Yeah, and my and you know my mind my 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 guesses and and my my things about like the fear and everything. I'm judging it based solely on her actions and what what she's told other people so far. You know that that's what I'm basing mine on. So it, it might be just a subtle thing that viewers can pick up, and then when they finally explicitly explicitly say it, they'll be like, "Oh yeah, so I was right." <laughs> so you know, it, it just it just might be some of that more subtle writing. I don't know. Um, letting the letting the actor and the, and the character show it instead of just blatantly saying, "Yes, I am afraid of her," and if I don't do what she says, not only will she pull the plug on my money, but she will stake me through the heart. You know, <laughs> you know. It, you, know, you know, you know, showing, not telling, at this point. Um, yeah, I mean, they'll have to spell it out eventually because some character is going to ask. But and then, and then all the viewers, like I said, we could be like, "Yep, we're right." <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, and with with Nina, it it is very obvious, and even Obrecht is saying Nina needs help. Yeah. It, yeah. That was- yeah. Obrecht thinks so. You know it's bad. Oh yeah. <laughs> and Obrecht, of course, is also a little feel- fearful because in order to help Nina get get Ava's baby from her, she had to use a couple of Obrecht's prescription pads to get the necessary medications. And of course, Obrecht is like, um, yeah. If my career goes down the tubes because of this, you, uh, she she is not happy with that. And, and a little fearful because obviously, I don't know if if I was Obrecht at that point I would have called the cops yeah. personally because I don't care if you're my sister or whatever you just committed a fucking crime I know you committed a fucking crime and you're doing it in a way that might implicate me fuck you although I gotta say I don't think Obrecht actually cares I mean she what did she do like the W didn't like the WSB get her her job as chief of the hospital I think she's more the fact that it was Madeline, you know, because she they get along so poorly. Yeah. That no matter, I mean, no matter what Madeline's up to, she's not going to be on. Obrecht is not going to be on board. Yeah. Um, because I don't really think she she cares too much about committing crimes, given her own long list. That's true. Uh, and and <laughs> yeah. friends as well. Yeah, illegal experiments on humans. Yeah, which of course Madeline calls her out on. Because it's like, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, I, I had a thought concerning Obrecht. I kind of lost it. Damn. Uh, oh, oh, right. Well, the reason why Obrecht probably wouldn't call the cops. Who is the chief of staff? Anna. That's true. You have a point. Yeah. That's and, true. She does hate all the cops because Anna Devane. Well, she, which, well honestly, except Nathan. Except Nathan. Yeah. But, ugh. Honestly, like, uh, I have trouble, like, not agreeing with her on that now that I really think about it. Because um, <laughs> I'm just, these cops are so incompetent, and Anna is such a goddamn hypocrite. And I just, like, uh, Oh, yes. She's, I just, I hate her grandstanding. And the way she's basically like hoity toity and like, uh, I am the law and it's all about the law, except when it's convenient for her. Yeah. Everybody must follow the law except me when I don't want to. Mm. You know that, you know, you made me think, think this is definitely off track for just a moment, but I want to hear Fanola Hughes say, I am the law. You know, I'll judge Dredd. I want to hear her do that. Fanola Hughes, if you're listening, uh, can you can you do that for us? She's probably not listening. That would be awesome. <laughs> that would be awesome if she was, though. <laughs> oh, God. And if she was listening, she'd been listening for a while. She would hear us bad-mouthing Anna all this time. Or, or, or at least or at least Namio doing it. <laughs> yeah. I'm She's a like... snot, though. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I, I, like, I like Anna a lot more when she's storylines with Robin, with Patrick, with Emma. Yeah, you know. exactly. When she's when it's her personal life and not her professional life. Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. Or at the very yeah. least is not bound by, you know, the, the local laws, the local police. 
when, yeah. when she doesn't have that boundary on her, if even if it's like, even if she's like a rogue agent or what have you, you know, that gives her a little bit more freedom to act. But yeah. character-wise, she is mostly bound by the law, with some yeah. exceptions, which you know puts her into hypocrite territory. Yeah, but... yeah. That that's actually that's actually a really good point, Julia. Like, I don't. I don't dislike Anna as character. I just hate her as a cop. Because <laughs> she's so bad at her job. Ugh. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, she actually, you know, when, when everything started going down, she and Dante saw the footage that Scott got from Franco. And she went, you know, and, and before all of this happened, she gave Duke a chance. Because Sonny, even before the footage came out, Sonny was... You know, uh, number one. Well, I don't know if he was number one suspect, but he was a suspect again. And she gave Duke a chance to just recant his uh, testimony. And Duke's like, "No, I will not do that." But turns out, yeah, they I have. Attempt in Scottish accent. Yeah, that is my attempt at a Scot. No, that is my attempt at 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 uh, um, imitating Duke. Not nec- not just a Scottish accent, just Luke. Just I was about to say Luke. Duke. Ah. But um. But no, he doesn't. He doesn't recant. And when he learns everything is coming out, he's got the oh shit face going on. Anna comes and finds him and fucking arrests him. And Which, uh, yeah, again, you have a conflict of interest. You should not be the one arresting him. You are bad at your job. And sending Dante to arrest Sonny. Come the fuck on. Yeah. Again. Yeah. I think it's really funny because every time this comes up, because obviously it comes up constantly, with, especially with Dante and Sunny, is that people always ask, oh, are you okay with doing this? And Dante's always like, yeah, I, I can handle it. And it's just like, honey, it's not about whether or not you think you can handle it. You should recuse yourself because you're personally involved. It's not about exactly. how you feel about it. Yeah, but it no, should... that never comes up. No, uh, it should be if, if in in a perfect world, in a perfect written, perfectly written world, it should probably be Nathan going after Sonny, and Dante going and getting Duke, and Anna taking on Nina. Uh, you know, yeah. anything besides the setup they've got now. I I just picked those just three out of random there, but yeah, yeah but you know, just just not the way they've got it now, but. At the same time, it looks like Anna has broken up with Duke, and oh my god, are they going to pair Duke with Lucy? I hope I not. I hope not. Like, <laughs> oh. I mean, okay, like, we're all on the same page. <laughs> it's just, I, no, 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 I don't, no, no. I don't dislike Lucy as much now as I did when I first started watching, mm-hmm. but no. No, 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 no. And, like, I really don't feel like Duke would go for her because she's too frantic. Yeah. I mean, and, it's, and just seeing his reactions when Lucy at, at was still getting over the whole Scott scenario, you know, the look on his face looked at her. He looked at Anna like, help me. Exactly. <laughs> this crazy woman is hugging me. I don't know why. <laughs> So I, I feel like we have the same opinion, but for opposite reasons. I really like Lucy, and I think Duke is mildly <clears throat> boring. So uh, I love <laughs> Lucy, and, and I love Lucy and Scotty. I just think they play off each other so well, and they're so much more interesting. Yeah. And Duke, I think, should be more interesting. I don't think I don't think it's him. I think the writing has been a little bit failing him. He's just been sort of background, and so it's hard for me to really care about him um because he just it feels like he pops up you know every few weeks to like hang out with anna and then once every couple months maybe mentions their like you know miscarried baby from you know 30 40 years ago and that he still blames the drums for which not that that isn't important like i get that but it's just it's so not even relevant like it's like anna never mentions it you know she's kind of moved on and it's just i feel like he's stuck in a holding pattern he still wants yeah. revenge on the Jeromes. Like, Julian's not even, like, Duke isn't even on Julian's radar anymore. Like, Duke needs something new. So this thing, I think, might be good in terms of the rest, not the thing with Lucy. But yeah. the rest with Anna is going to give him, I think, more a more interesting storyline and hopefully make him more intriguing on yeah. his own yeah. merit and not just how he relates to Hannah. 
That yeah. would be good. Or, or you know, to see him, you know, throw in with Sunny wholeheartedly, which yeah. he clearly wants to do. Yeah, because, hey, why not? It's a way to get rid of Julian Jerome, who is no longer a threat to him because Julian is also, you know, Julian, yeah, he's still in the mob, but, you know, under duress. But Julian wants to take down the crime leader, whoever fake Luke is supposed to be. I still think it's Lord Ashton, I, I, even though we saw him be drunkenly oh. thrown back, but I think it's still an act. I don't know if you saw... Um... I saw uh, there was a article that came across my newsfeed that someone in the Zakara family has been confirmed to be coming back. Oh boy. Uh, well, we'll we'll have to see on that one. It's probably just someone. I, there was there was a name. I don't remember what it was. So it wasn't Johnny. Maybe. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. If... Yeah, if if it's Johnny, the last time I, I wasn't he in jail in prison. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So for all we know, there could be a prison scene with him. <laughs> there could be, but if I mean, if Heather can keep getting out of like maximum security, it's possible there's a jailbreak or yeah. or parole in his future. Yeah, and of course, if he is one with the, the league of the anti Sunny mob. Which also includes Jerry Jacks, and at this point, Helena Cassidyne. <laughs> yeah, she's a Cassidyne. She she's like magic, almost. It's just boom. Yeah, I I want you out, so you are going to be out. Boom. There you go. I have a lot of money, ha. Huh? And if you don't like it, I can freeze you. Hmm. So, you know, with Helena Cassidyne involved, just about anything is possible. <laughs> <laughs> or Cassidines in general. Anything is possible. Oh, so um, 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 we were we were at Anna and Duke. Um, uh, real quick, I did just look it up. There's there are in fact rumors that Brandon Brash is returning to the role of Johnny, although it is not confirmed yet. Ah, okay. So, okay. so it is Johnny. I'm okay. not gonna get my hopes up, but yeah, <clears throat> that would be my dream. Yeah, there you go. Oh, so uh, so okay, so Nathan still looking for Nina, obviously. Um. Not, I, I didn't see much with him this week. Uh, at least I'm not remembering much. He and Tony <laughs> both, I just, I think, had that uh, nice partner talk about you know, arresting yeah. their relatives. Yeah. But it's like, you two should just switch. You know, Anna's yes. Anna's already crossed that line at that point, I think. So you two just switch. Uh, you, know, you, you know, Dante, you go after Nina. Nathan, you go arrest Sonny. Because, you know... Cause you know he's at the brownstone, you know the same brownstone that that you 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 uh got Maxie and and Levi away from, you know because they were having a sit-in protest because reasons. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and speaking of the brownstone, uh, yeah, we we it's time for us to talk. Uh, I I I know we we brought up you know Michael a bit a bit more, but now. We get to talk a little bit more about the action surrounding the brownstone, a little bit more in depth, because uh, how Nina got uh, Silas away was she she basically got Madeline to fake a, uh, a a a positive test for leukemia with little Danny. Naturally, Sam is is freaking the fuck out. Everybody else is freaking the fuck out, and Silas, you know, he said, you know what, put a rush on this thing. I don't give a damn what Obrek says. Rush this fucker. And by the time they get the results back that that say that Danny's tests came back negative, so he he does not he did not come back. Um, Nina has gotten there; she's gotten the baby, and she has escaped with Madeline, but not before Ava tells Nina that Madeline hired her to seduce Silas twenty years ago. Which that never occurred to me before. Me neither, but it doesn't surprise me. No. At all, because she was <clears throat> desperate to break them up, mm-hmm. and we knew that much. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and and later on, you know, Madeline even confirms for Nina, you know, that yes, I did, you know, yada yada yada. Uh. And then not long after the baby is gone, ne- you know, Ava is, you know, she's crawling to the door. She gets to the door. Oh, hi, Sunny. How did he find her? Morgan! I am yeah. so mad at Morgan for that. Yeah. I don't care what Ava has done. She was vulnerable. 
and pregnant and alone, and instead of uh, uh, letting her know what had changed, he left her waiting alone and terrified for all that shit to go down, and then Sonny shows up, and Morgan's not even with him. Yeah. Well, to be fair, to be fair, Morgan did not know that Ava was alone. He thought that Silas was with her, still looking after her and the baby. And he was not, you know, when he when he was talking to Kiki, because Kiki uh, yelled at him for that too. Um, you know what he said when when he saw Kiki was, you know, my dad. He's just gonna go grab Ava. He's gonna take her somewhere safe. And, uh, you know, we'll have time to talk him out of killing her. Yeah. True. And, True. You know, I kind of feel like he was wrong about that. But I I understand, like, that's where his mind was. At the same time, like, he gave up Ava really easy. Right. I yeah. mean, like, way easier than I expected. I mean... Yeah, it was a shock for him finding out that, you know, she killed Connie. It was a shock for uh, Kiki, too. Mm -hmm. Um, But, uh, yeah, like, after all of that, it took relatively little for Morgan to turn on Ava and, you know, basically offer her up to someone that he knows wants to kill her. I I have to think that Morgan is being a little naive yeah. still with this. He's he's very young, and they've, you know, they've very quickly moved him into these, you know, adult storylines, but, you know, before Brian Craig entered the role, we, you know, and, you know, aged him up, obviously, we all thought he was still what, like, uh, off at high school, like, military school. So, it's, I think it's easy to forget that it was so recent, because Brian Craig is, you know, so much older looking, and, you know, married and this and that but he's still very young and I think he's being a little naive in terms of Sonny and what Sonny is willing to do and he thinks he can talk Sonny out of it and I don't think he realizes just how determined Sonny is to put yeah. it in the ground well and yeah. that that's that's consistent with Morgan's character because really, uh, throughout all of his interactions with the mob and with Sonny and with really with everybody, he has shown a remarkable lack of understanding of what's going on. Um, like when he, you know, betrayed Sonny to the Jeromes because he was having that bitch fit. Like it never occurred to him that he could be putting his family in mortal danger and it still didn't occur to him until Michael beat the crap out of him. Yeah. <laughs> which, which I still, I still have the clip. It's probably still up on YouTube uh, of, of like a slight mashup of uh, Michael, you know, just punching the fuck out of Morgan it followed quickly by a clip of the nostalgia critic going joy. Yes. Because that was still jo- sheer joy there. <laughs> oh God, I I I was so happy when Morgan got his act, ass kicked there. But you know he he has grown up a lot since then. But he still has these blind spots. Yeah, and uh, is played very well. I mean, right. Oh, and 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 by the way, Morgan and and, and Sonny were and they ended up at the hospital because Max got shot in the shoulder. By Heather, because for whatever reason, she went to Sonny's place and, and shot Max. I don't even know why she went there, other than well, just to... Well, she, she was to... trying to send Sonny a message of don't mess with Franco, but Max passed out before he could relay that it was Heather. Yeah, which leads, which led Sonny to thinking it was Ava. Even Morgan is telling him, no, Ava is pregnant and and she even if she wanted to she couldn't do it yeah just no (laughs) because that's the information he had at the time and i love when heather went back to uh jordan and sean she walked back in and she just had herself a lollipop so my first thought was wait she went there she shot max just to get a goddamn lollipop (laughs) (laughs) just what the fuck i mean it, it, it might fit but just what the hell 
Yeah. Well, I mean, Heather has never made much sense, so <laughs> shooting someone for a lollipop does not really strike me as that uh, far from her character. No. That's true. <laughs> I suppose not, but wow. Ah. I mean, she'll she'll come with you quietly if you give her a BLT. This is this is the same woman. This is true. Yes. Do anything for a BLT. Yes. Oh, oh my God, that would be a, that would be a hell of a way to lead Heather somewhere. Just have a trail of BLTs. <laughs> you know, that, that would be awesome. Just like they, they couldn't be full size though. They'd have to be like like bite size. You know, so you have a bite size BLT trail going somewhere, and she goes in there, and then you just drop the trap on her, uh, and she freaks out a little bit. Once she realizes what hap- what's happened, and she's in the middle of a BLT. Oh shit! <laughs> I'm in a I am in a box. Rah 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 rah. <laughs> Oh, so when Sunny when Sunny did rush off to uh, to kill Ava, or or to get Ava at the very least, he also is in the mindset. Okay, you know, still not believing Morgan, especially noticing that Ava is no longer pregnant. So he's like, you know what, I'm I'm gonna kill you right now, eye for an eye, that sort of thing. You know, even though Ava is obviously distraught, she needs to find her daughter. I mean, and Sonny is promising that, yeah, she, no harm is going to come to her. Yeah, like no harm came to Michael, right? Mm. Yeah, he was also under your protection. So was Morgan. And, and, and yeah, in other words, I don't trust Sonny's promise there. Uh, because I don't. Well, I mean, say what you will about Sonny. He he means it yeah. when he says he's going to do his best by his kids. Um, I know a lot of people are really pissed at Sonny right now, and I am too, but. That is the one thing I think is consistently true with him. He will go above and beyond trying to protect his kids. That doesn't mean they're never going to get hurt. Yeah. But if he can help it, they won't be in danger. He'll do anything for his kids. Yeah. Slash grandkids. Yeah. And and that is a good point. That, that has been a good... That has been one of those positive things that I can always attribute to Sonny. Um, ex- except the times when he doesn't. <laughs> uh, but, you know... I, between now and and the times that I've seen him before, I think this is one of those times where I've actually seen him, you know, actually break that, you know, you know, shooting AJ and killing him, thus robbing Michael of his biological father, who he was just getting to know and getting close to, you know, even if it was in the heat of the moment, and in, even with Sonny admitting he was wrong, and, and it's it's just, uh, and of course there are other times where. Sonny not only admits he was wrong, he's admit- he's admitting his wrongness in front of Michael, who who stormed in right as he was about to shoot Ava, fired a warning shot in the ceiling, and I started singing, Mikey's got a gun, Mikey sees got a gun, <laughs> and it's like, oh shit, and and of course Michael is not very happy with Ava either, but he, he's like, yeah, get the fuck out of here, and and again. It, 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 there's like slight slut shaming here too, and it's like, dudes, I, I blame the writers on that one. It's like, guys, come on. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And I like how um, in this universe, someone can shoot a gun inside a house and nobody calls the cops. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, hopefully, you know, Dante and Morgan are about to rush in. And try yeah. to defuse the situation, yeah. but and, not and because no. uh, so, but not because Michael fired a gun because they got tipped right. off, right? Yeah, uh, but then again, what is it you always say about the cops, Namio? They suck at their jobs. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I, I do hope that Michael realizes um, that disowning Sonny, so to speak, I'm um, telling him, you know, you're not my father, all that. It is going to hurt Sonny way more than shooting him. Yes. Yeah. Hurt him. Yeah. And so I, I hope he doesn't actually go through with it and shoot him. Because one of the things I like about Michael is he's, I don't want to say the white sheep of the family, because actually most of Sonny's kids aren't really that involved with mob stuff. But he's yeah. always been this very good guy. And even when he has hurt people, um, or I should be more accurate, when he has killed people, because he has done so, it's always been either in self-defense or in direct defense of someone else. Yeah. And so him just shooting Sonny in cold blood, no matter what Sonny has done, feels so out of character for him that I hope he doesn't actually go through with it. Yeah. And, yeah. and, I, and, and the, one, the chilling thing, Michael is like, I keep my promises. I'm going to make the, fa- I'm going to make the killer of my father pay. 
Yeah. Which I I I I I am with you on hoping that he doesn't shoot Sonny or kill him because I've said it before and I'll even say it again. As much as I am not a fan of Sonny, especially nowadays, I don't want him dead. You know. Mm-hmm. You know, just just you know, take him down like several notches. You know, he he has gotten to this point where there is a reason why the you, your mileage may vary. Uh, General Hospital page on the uh, General Hospital uh, page of TV tropes. Mm-hmm. I I know that came out very very weird, but General Hospital TV tropes. Your mileage may vary. He he is he is listed under the black hole Sue entry there. You know, and and he's termed as a villain Sue because it's like it's like oh god, uh, what was it the the Sherry baby who who had mentioned. You know, in her thing, Sonny gets away with practically everything, especially legally. It's like, you know, he shoots somebody, he gets away with it. He he, he could probably run drugs and get away with it if he wanted yeah. to, but, you know, he doesn't do it. But again, again, you know, that's he's got main character immunity. Yeah. And we know that. So we know that he's not just going to randomly die. Yeah. We know he's not going to, you know, go off to Pentonville for an extended period of time yeah. because the actor is still employed there. Yeah, Un- unless unless Maurice Bernard needs some time off, a good amount of time off to like, I, I think he's been working on a movie himself recently. I, I follow him on Twitter. I've seen hits and bits and pieces here and there. But uh, if he needs time off for that, I'm I'm sure they'll the writers would find a way to write Sonny out at least long enough for him to do the movie and then write him back in with some convoluted thing. I don't know. And for all we know, Sonny may not go to jail. He might not even be arrested. He might just go on the run and what's going to happen with his territory at that point? You know, is Sean going to run it? Is Morgan going to run it? I mean, that that's one of the that's actually a possibility I never thought of until right now. <laughs> oh, oh, speak sorry, speaking of Sean, mm-hmm. one of my favorite moments this week was uh, when um, Sonny was trying to call Sean to go after the baby and Ava's like really Sean he sucks we need someone professional yeah <laughs> Sean, Sean can't even hit the blind side of a Franco yes <laughs> just and can't like, do it he can't do it oh god damn although another good one though was uh, when Franco was talking to everybody in the warehouse, and he had his back to Sean, and Sean started to rush him, and Franco just turned to just boom, warning shot in the ground. <laughs> right. I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> Sean is the worst hitman slash mobster I-, I think we've seen on this show. Yes. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, you know, I've been saying that since he tried to take out Franco. <laughs> right. And fucking failed spectacularly. I don't think there's a single thing uh, on this show that saw a violent thing that Sean has managed to do successfully well, since no, I've no, started no. watching. Well, no, he, he did manage, manage to successfully beat the shit out of Franco. And, yeah, but the purpose of that was to get Franco to leave the quarter mains, and it didn't work. No. But he, he, he's real good at hitting stuff. And apparently he's really good in bed. I, I suppose. Or he thinks he is. He seems to think very highly of himself whenever he's talking to Jordan about, oh, how much she wants him. And every time she's like, uh, wow, no, you're a little off the mark there. Um, yeah. You know, I'm here to talk business or I'm here to talk about TJ or, or whatever. Like, I, he's just been pissing me off on every front lately. Yeah, Sean, it is not about your penis. Shut up. <laughs> And, and this is coming from somebody who is very highly sexually minded. It's not about your penis. Shut the fuck up. You know? Let's tell you about my pants feels. Yes. <laughs> yes. Let's do that. Oh, God. Oh, so what What else have I... What, what have, we not, have we not touched on? I feel like we're missing a few other pieces here. Um, let's see. Well, Ava, when Ava got away... Ava got away. She she scrolled strolled down to the well, not strolled down, but kind of crawled down to the dock. Strike, yeah, strolled in in severe after pregnancy pain. Sure, you know, you know, strolled down there. She tries to call out for Franco. He apparently didn't. I guess he didn't hear her. 
so glad he didn't because I feel like that would have been a huge mistake on her part. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. because again, one more woman that lied to him. Yeah. yeah. I and mean, then it's like, oh, uh, and then and then Silas and Kiki finally figuring out, okay, you know, she's in the she's in danger. You know, you know, they realize, oh shit, Nina m- must have sent the message about you know staying there at the hospital. Morgan's with her, and mm-hmm. Kiki telling him, no, he's been here. They, they they both rush off to the brownstone, and they find Ava along the way. And and, and uh, Silas does the smart thing, calls Nathan. You know, a a cop. <laughs> Which gives Silas credit. He'll he will at least do that. Yeah. Uh. Oh lordy, lordy, lordy. Um, yeah, Nathan. Nathan is one of the only people in the Port Charles Police Department that is mildly competent. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that's because he didn't grow up in Port Charles. <laughs> well, neither did Dante. And yeah, that's true. Dante and neither can- did Anna. Dante can be mildly, um, mildly effective when he wants to be, but usually he's just like, der, for der. Yeah. Anna's been in Fort Charles long enough, she's, she's a native. She's, yeah. she's I mean, had all of her brain cells flake away, so. Yeah, it, it turns out, you know, having, you know, having your death faked on, by a boat explosion in the, in the early 90s does something to you. <laughs> oh, so, and, and, for I, that, and for that I'll blame Faison. And, oh, but but uh, so a while, like a, I don't know how many episodes ago, Gomer, you and I had talked about if there were any characters, uh, especially kids, or you know, uh, characters who who used to be kids. Um, if there are any of them who hadn't been kidnapped. Yeah. And I just thought that was really funny because literally, Ava, like, and we had predicted that Ava's baby was going to get kidnapped. Yes, we but did. But I don't think, I don't think e- either one of us expected that she would literally be kidnapped the minute she was born. I, I don't think I expected that. Uh, Julia, did you expect that? Um, you know... Definitely that it would happen. And honestly, maybe not like the second she was born, but I mean, Nina was getting really desperate. So I wasn't shocked. Although I do have to say that Brit has Nina beat on that score because she kidnapped Rocco as an embryo. That's true. And yeah. gave birth to him herself. This is true. This is very true. <laughs> you, make a, you make a strong point. <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, they are related, so... <laughs> oh god and, and with Nina when she's talking Ava through the whole birth she's like yeah you just reach in there grab it out and Nina's like what the fuck oh, giving birth to, helping a cow give birth <laughs> so that, was, that was not very reassuring for Ava no, it's like no. Ava it's like god damn and of course Ava manages to give birth and Nina manages to do it fine and well and, you know without the fisting implications Thankfully, because I I really hope that this week Nina or Madeline somehow like I don't know maybe gets a hold of Rosalie at the very least and blackmails or bribes or threatens her to get her to come check out the baby because that baby is premature and needs to be seen by a doctor. Yeah, yeah please. This, despite the fact that the baby they have uh, like was cl- is clearly about like three months old. <laughs> Yeah. Like when when she pulled that baby up, I'm like, okay, if you gave birth to that, I'm pretty sure your abdomen would explode. <laughs> Probably just ah, but it 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 could be just a make do with what you've got thing. I don't know. I don't know why they well, make baby dolls. They they uh, well, it, I think it's probably like labor laws in Hollywood. I know there are a bunch of different. Uh, regulations for like how long babies can be on the set and stuff like that well yeah not, not to mention how many parents do you know who would pop out a baby and uh swing over to a tv set the second after it's born so that they have a properly newborn looking baby. yeah yeah <laughs> that would be, that would be a thing. well that's what that's why they have dolls i mean like when uh gabriel was born 
I mean, yeah. it was like you, you could kind of tell that there was nothing in the blanket, but yeah. but you know, uh, uh, what's his what's what's his name? Uh, uh, the guy who plays Patrick. Patrick, yeah. Yeah, uh, he Jason he was. Thompson. Thank you, Jason Thompson was uh, selling it for all it's worth. You know, it was like, okay, I know there's nothing here. People probably realize it, but I'm gonna play off it anyway. That 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 get that gives jason thompson you know more in my book right there just boom points to him although i did i did like uh someone shared a picture of uh i I think it was actually on the on um one of the on the general hospital discussion group uh they they shared a picture of patrick holding gabriel and you know in in the towels but but like he was holding it the bundle up against his chest and the caption was like, and unfortunately, the baby died from suffocation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 okay. Okay, okay. We're going to have to, we're going to have to wind down. But I, but you brought up the group and then that actually reminded me of something. I, I look in every now and then with, with that particular group and with like the actual general, you know, the official general hospital Facebook page or whatever. And with everything that has gone on with this week, like with Franco showing the, uh, you know, everything to Michael, including the sex in his apartment, including Sonny's confession, people got up in arms over Franco showing the first part. Because it's like, there were my, there was kids in that room. No, there weren't. No, no. Uh, Lucas took them out before that. Thank goodness. One of the adults had some sense. Yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah, Lucas took them out when... Uh... Right after Franco called Carly a whore, he's like, "Okay." Yeah, and and well, not before Franco called Jocelyn a little brat. And Which... I was so happy that Carly got up in his face, all mama bear like. Yeah. Because that was not cool, bringing the kids into it. Yeah, let's not do although, that. Although, although to be fair, Jocelyn is a little brat. Yeah. Well, and to be fair, Frank is a psychotic freak, and Jocelyn knew it. Yeah. True. <laughs> it's all true. I I I I. Uh, this is just one of those points where it's like, yeah, everybody is just kind of just, Every, yeah. Everybody sucks, yes. Yes. Uh. <laughs> but there there were people saying, you know, you know, the sex scene, they shouldn't have showed that on TV, and then it's going downhill. Have you watched this show? What Are is... you, that was one of the tamest. I know. It's like, what the they hell? See... What? Oh, people are stupid. Uh. I know. It's just, I... I'm, I'm sorry, you will find more intense stuff like that in prime time oh yeah prime time when the kids would be able to watch it because because that's another one of their things because it's one of those think of the children thing you know the children could be home from school for whatever reason and they could watch this and i'm sitting here thinking you're a parent you could change the channel yeah. you know they put this stuff online uh, but you know and you know i'm guessing those same people uh didn't really care about all the guns. Uh, I didn't but, see anybody mention that, but yeah, and or or complain about Max getting shot because uh, violence is okay, just as long as there's not any naughty bits. Yeah, and I, and and somebody actually brought up because I, I don't know how the conversation turned to it, but somebody brought up the uh, threesome storyline with uh, Felix, Luke, and Brad, and they're like, "That has no place on TV," and it's like. It's human interaction. People do it, you know? Yes. General Hospital and, and Soaps in general, they have at least some bases in reality. And guess what? In reality, sometimes people have threesomes. And didn't 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 you say they wound up not going through with it? Yeah, Felix ended right. up not going through with it. So then what's the then what's the problem? Oh my god. People talked about stuff. They talked about having a menage a trois. Oh my god. <laughs> People who are potential sexual partners actually talk to each other and negotiated. Yeah, I know, right? Although not to say the obvious, but I'm sure uh, plenty of the people who had an issue with it, it was more because it was three guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The actual threesome. <laughs> you, you're probably right. Cause, yeah. and, and somebody tried to call him out on that, too. But like, yeah, if it was two women, if there, were, if there was at least one woman involved or whatever, you probably wouldn't have as much of an issue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. Uh, but with that, we are going to go ahead and get out of here. Uh, as you noticed, last week, Namio is, is, didn't know about this last week, but we have bumpers now. We have new bumpers. So I don't, get to, I don't have to ramble as much when I do my thing. But um, before, I, before I do my thing, uh, if we wanted to find Julia on the interwebs, where could we find her? gh-musings.tumblr.com 
Sweet. And if we wanted to find Namio on the interwebs, where could we find her? Um, I am on Tumblr uh, at Namio's Corner. Uh, I am on Twitter at, uh, at Naomi Watford. The fabulous rtgomer.com. What? Yes, and that is also where you can find me. But in addition to rtgomer.com, which is my site, my, my, my home, if you will, uh, you can also find my stuff on nerdvice.com. And if you wanted to find me on the social medias, you could find me on Twitter and Tumblr and a lot of other places at gomer 21 X. And my Patreon stuff is actually going to be in the bumper, so I don't need to do that. But there is a special thing for this week. Um, on November 13th, I am doing a fundraising stream. Uh, it's basically to help raise money to get me to MAGFest. Uh, for one, I could really use a vacation. And for two, and more importantly, it gets me out there to network, gets me FaceTime with other people. That might help build the site a little bit more. Plus, I have business cards here, and I really want to pass them out. <laughs> so so it's both a mixture of business and pleasure. And whatever money isn't raised, then it'll, it'll go back into the site for, like, different artwork, more space upgrades, which that's still open to. Um, those links are going to be below if you're watching it on youtube or on the site or wherever um but there's that everything else like i said is in the bumper so uh with that we are going to get out of here i know we ran a little bit longer but it, I, I think we kind of needed to <laughs> uh, so uh but sometimes a longer show is good uh so uh, with that we're going to get out of here thank you guys for listening we will catch you next time and until then this is gomer the ranting thespio thespian rather with namio and julia signing off and i fucked up my end the Port Charlie Podcast is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Our show's theme is The Complex by Kevin McLeod. Find out more at Incompetech.com. If you like this show and want to help support future episodes, head over to Patreon.com slash Gomer21XX. For a contribution as little as a dollar per production, you can get early access to all future productions, as well as monthly patron-only vlogs and announcements. Our show's artwork was produced by the talented Becky Hopkins, who can be commissioned by going to Patreon.com slash Becky Hop. Check us out on iTunes or visit rtgomer.com for more great shows.